Hello, and welcome to the devotional site of the Protestant Community Church Cathedral of the Woods in Medford Lakes, New Jersey. I am Dr. R. Tim Meadows, Senior Pastor of the Protestant Community Church Cathedral of the Woods in Medford Lakes, New Jersey. We're delighted that you've joined us for worship today and pray that this will be a profitable experience for you, an opportunity to learn some of the things of God, an opportunity to encounter God, an opportunity to grow and deepen your faith in God. As we gather today, we're reminded that music and labor have often been linked throughout human history. People sing while they work. People sing about their work, both positively and negatively. People sing as an avocation beyond work. And some people sing as a means of work. Perhaps the greatest labor anthem in music came from the legendary late Merle Haggard, who in his working man blues sang how he would work as long as his two hands were fit to use. Whether the laborers in the vineyard in Jesus' parable before us today saying while they worked or not. It is clear that those who had worked the longest felt a bit like Haggard when he sang in Working Man Blues, I keep my nose to the grindstone. I work hard every day. Clearly, the earliest laborers thought that while they had done this, others who had worked less had not but the landowner was acting out of his generosity and not out of their perceived merit. Hence the point Jesus is making, which guides our worship together today. We gather to worship around the idea that God gives to us out of generosity, not because of our merit. God of grace and God of glory, offer us your power for living this day. God of grace and God of glory, extend to us your mercy this day. God of grace and God of glory, give us your love and empower us to love as we have been loved this day. Amen.
Please join me in the invocation as we pray together. Be present with us today in your goodness, O God. Be present with us today in your greatness, O God. Be present with us today in your grace, O God. With your presence, fill us with each of these things so that we may honor you and serve others in your name. These things we pray in the name of our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, God is present for us, always filling us with the things we need to live in the image of God in which we are created. Thanks be to God. Join me in the responsive reading based on Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 26. For me to live is Christ. Dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you, since I am convinced of this. I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for the purpose of your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus. When I come to you again, amen. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, 
scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross has Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. Then in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse is lost its grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny, no part of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16, Parable of the Workers in the Vineyard. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go out and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon at about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go out and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those who came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give you, give the one who has hired the last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you an envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Of the parable of the laborers in the vineyard from Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 through 16. This is what the text says. Jesus' parable of the laborers in the vineyard is another of his efforts to describe how the kingdom of God differs from the world of typical human experience. 
the reaction of those who work the longest is what most readers or listeners would expect. Their reaction plays directly into the point that Jesus seeks to make, which is that the kingdom of God is radically different than the world. As Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan have observed, the kingdom of God will be a place where everyone present has enough to meet their needs without the charity of others. In Borg and Crossan's opinion, that scenario is what economic justice would look like if it were realized in our world. In essence, this parable is Jesus joining his voice with the Hebrew prophets who preceded him, pleading for justice, mercy, and humility on the part of all. That is the challenge the parable poses. How we realize the challenge is the task of discipleship left to us. That is what the text says. Now, here is what the preacher says. While the parable of the laborers in the vineyard is not likely a business model for conducting effective labor relations, it is an accurate picture of the hoped-for kingdom of God and the generosity of God toward all. The parable offers us at least the following to be considered. In the kingdom of God, everyone has a place because God says so. It's God's kingdom and God intends for everyone to have a place. In the kingdom of God, God can always be trusted to do what is right. And in fact, the truth is only God knows what is truly right. The kingdom of God belongs to God and not to us. Just as the landowner had to remind the laborers in the parable that he was the owner in charge and not they. In the kingdom of God, we all receive more than we deserve because that's just how God operates. In the kingdom of God, everyone has a place, no matter when they arrive. As the Jewish New Testament scholar, Amy Jill Levine points out, isn't it interesting that the early laborers in the parable do not want to be treated fairly no, they want to be treated better than the other laborers. As with the Old Testament prophets who preceded him, Jesus argues that in the kingdom of God, those who have the means to do so bear a direct responsibility to provide in meaningful ways for those who do not unless they are given opportunity. That provision of opportunity is the responsibility of those with the means to provide such. One's place in the kingdom of God is inversely proportional to one's actual or perceived place of importance in the world. That is what the preacher says. Now here's what the text and the preacher ask of you. The parable of the laborers in the vineyard requires us to take a thorough look at the way things are in our world and to ask the hard questions about how those things could be improved. The parable poses at least the following questions. Do you find yourself identifying more with the long-term laborers 
or the owner in this parable. Have you ever had this kind of experience from either position? How did you feel? What did you learn from the experience? How has that helped you to grow in your human journey? Most assume those who worked only a short time were delighted with their pay. What do you think? Can you imagine a scenario in which they may have felt undeserving or even in danger once they left the vineyard to inhabit the same communities the long-term laborers lived in with them? Do you believe the economic justice of which Borg and Crossan speak is a real possibility in this world? If so, how do you think it would change the world? Can you imagine a world in which charity is no longer necessary? If so, are you willing to work to help make such a world possible? Why do we tend to think of charity as a good thing while viewing economic equality as a negative thing? Does it have to do with the power that charity brings to the one who gives? Is it fair for a small portion of the world to possess an inordinate amount of the world's resources, even if they earn such? If it is, why do you think Jesus would offer such a glaring contrast between the world and the kingdom of God? Why would Jesus and the Hebrew prophets insist as they did on economic justice for all. I keep my nose to the grindstone. I work hard every day, Haggard sang, and scripture tells us that God applauds hard work. But God also believes in justice for all. And God also seeks justice for all. And it is that justice that is on display in today's parable. May God give us the desire to seek the same kind of justice in our world. And may God give us the grace to do our part in helping to realize such. Amen. God who made us, Christ who calls us, breath who guides us in the way, hear the humble words we whisper, as we dare to bow and pray. Live your light within and through us, dawn in us eternal day. Tell us as we brave the darkness, when to speak and what to say. Give us courage, humble courage, Give us faith that will not fail. Give us love with no exceptions. Through us let your peace prevail. God who made us, Christ who 
calls us, breath who guides from deep within. May our lives of mumble praying and with heaven's clear amen. Yeah.